There is a book that I recommend to people, The Case for Christ. We also made a movie out of it. The movie's good, but the book was much better. It tells a story, true story, of a reporter for the Chicago Tribune who was an atheist, and when his wife became a Christian, he decided that he would have to disprove the existence of Jesus, disprove his bodily resurrection. And the problem was, the more he tried to disprove, the more proof he found that Jesus actually lived, that he was crucified, he died, and he rose again from the dead. And so the book and the movie are called The Case for Christ. One of the arguments that he looks at, and this is from the perspective of a lawyer, he went to an Ivy League law school, and as a journalist, he looked at the Gospels and he said, if you were going to write a fake account, you would clearly not put all of the blemishes on the saints. You would not include the failings of the apostles. And so he said it is an indicator, not proof, but an indicator that the Gospels were actually accurate. <clears throat> I think we can say uh, something similar about the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. First of all, we need to remember that keeping track of a genealogy would have not been strange for the Jews. If you were going to be a priest, you had to trace your lineage 10 generations on each side, your mothers and your fathers, to prove that for 10 generations, your family had been only priests of the priestly families. And so when we look at this uh, genealogy of Jesus, this is coming from a people who kept track of genealogies. Second, we're keeping track from the patriarchs to the kings to the Christ. But the interesting thing is, as we keep track of the generations, we have some very good holy people, we have some very bad people. Tamar actually had to sleep with Judah to get him to allow her to wed his son. Uh, a little ways down, uh, we have uh, Solomon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. Uh, then if you go down a couple of more generations, Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Ruth wasn't Jewish. And then Solomon, David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. They don't say uh, her name. They say the wife of Uriah because David had an affair with her. Then he killed, uh, he lied, and then he had, had her husband, uh, Uriah, killed. So we see that there are a lot of women that are not uh, maybe the best role models. The men are even worse. The men are even worse. Um, David, he is adulterous, he's a liar, and then he's a murderer. Um, <clears throat> Solomon's son, Rehoboam, is responsible for breaking apart the, uh, the kingdoms. Uh, and it gets worse and worse until you've got Manasseh. Manasseh was offering child sacrifices. Uh, it just, when you look at the generations, you say, wow, they just keep getting worse. 
if you were going to make up a genealogy for the Christ, you would think that they would not include these sinners, that they would just paint a rosy picture. But Jesus, he shares in our humanity. He does not, <clears throat> in his person, commit any sins, but he suffers for our sins. He unites himself completely to us in all things but sin. And when we know that, we know that Jesus is sympathetic to our sins. We know that Jesus understands our failings. And we know, and this is so important, that Jesus came to raise us up. He shared in our humanity to lift us up, to share in his divinity. Amen.